As we dive into this story, imagine looking up and seeing a colossal mirror drifting above the Earth, because that unbelievable sight actually happened. This wasn't CGI or a concept sketch, it was a real reflector placed in orbit not once but twice, instantly becoming one of the strangest human creations ever launched into space. And the mirror itself is only half the story. Behind it was a bold, not-so-secret Soviet plan built on the idea that a giant reflector in orbit could serve surprising, practical purposes. So why did they send it up there, and what were they hoping to achieve? To understand how the Soviets ended up launching a giant mirror into orbit, we have to rewind way back. For centuries, humans have imagined bending sunlight to their will. There's even the legendary tale of Archimedes, who supposedly used massive burning mirrors to ignite Roman ships attacking his home city. The story is probably more myth than fact, but it planted a powerful idea. Sunlight can be weaponized. Fast forward to the year 1929 when physicist Hermann Oberth sketched out one of the earliest serious proposals for an orbital mirror, a 100-meter-wide, concave reflector mounted to a space station capable of focusing sunlight onto a precise spot on Earth. Then came World War II, and the concept took a darker turn. Nazi scientists reimagined the space mirror as a superweapon they called the sun gun. Their bold proposal placed a 9-square-kilometer sodium reflector at an altitude of 88,200 kilometers. In theory, it would beam concentrated sunlight strong enough to scorch cities or boil lakes. But even back in 1945, writers for Life magazine pointed out the obvious flaw, solar reflections simply don't stay focused over such massive distances. Instead of a death ray, the sun gun would only cast a giant, harmless circle of light. Still, these early dreams, half science, half science fiction, set the stage for what the Soviets attempted decades later. Now, to understand how this strange Soviet mirror ever made it off the drawing board, we have to meet the man behind the idea, Vladimir Siromyatnikov, one of the most brilliant yet underrated engineers of the entire space age. Born in 1933, he came into the world during one of the harshest chapters of Soviet history, a time defined by Joseph Stalin's political purges, paranoia, and relentless militarization. Yet, in the middle of all that turmoil, Vladimir found his passion in engineering. And not just any engineering, he set his sights on space. As the Soviet Union raced to outpace the United States, Siromyatnikov quickly rose through the ranks. By the start of the 1960s, he was already a central figure in the Soviet program. One of his early breakthroughs was working on the Vostok spacecraft, the very one that carried Yuri Gagarin into orbit in the year 1961, making him the first human in space. That alone would have cemented Vladimir's place in history, but he didn't stop there. His next contributions transformed global spaceflight. He designed the androgynous docking systems used in the Apollo-Soyuz test project, the first collaborative mission between the United States and the Soviet Union. Later versions of his design became the backbone of international space docking. Vladimir had a personal obsession, solar sails, giant reflective sheets, shimmering in sunlight, pushing spacecraft forward using nothing but photon pressure. To him, mirrors weren't just tools, they were the future of exploration. And that passion combined with collapsing Soviet economics in the 1990s set the stage for one of the strangest experiments ever launched into space. By the early 1990s, the Soviet Union was collapsing, money was evaporating, and high-concept space research, like solar sails, suddenly had no political audience. No one wanted to fund deep space dreams when the government could barely keep the lights on back home. So Vladimir Siromyatnikov did something brilliant. He reinvented his idea. Instead of pitching solar sails as spacecraft propulsion, he reframed them as an economic tool for a country in crisis. What if, he asked, we use giant reflectors in orbit not to push spacecraft but to push back the darkness? And he meant that literally. Northern Russia spends long stretches of winter in total night, weeks with no sunrise at all. That means freezing temperatures, huge energy bills, and almost zero productivity. 
Siromyatnikov's new concept was bold but strangely practical. Deploy a massive reflective, sail in orbit and redirect sunlight down onto Arctic towns during the dark season. With just one satellite, you could turn night into a soft artificial day, bright enough to work, bright enough to live. And if one reflector worked, imagine a whole chain of them in sun-synchronous orbit, each staying perfectly aligned above Russia. In theory, they could provide 24-7 illumination, reducing the need for electric lighting and cutting heating costs. Suddenly, this wasn't a high-risk science experiment. It was an economic revolution. Investors immediately saw the potential, a device that could turn the sun back on in winter that was worth betting on. And with that momentum, the project received its official name, Znamya, meaning banner, a symbol of light, hope, and technological rebirth during the nation's darkest years. What happened next would become one of the strangest and most ambitious experiments ever carried out in orbit. After proving the concept on the ground, Siram Yatnikov and his team moved into the boldest phase of all, scaling the Znamya mirrors until they could literally change the night sky. The first prototype stayed on Earth, serving as a dress rehearsal. The plan started modestly enough with Znamya 2, a reflector about 20 meters across. Then the team would step up to Znamya 2.5, expanding the mirror to 25 meters. After that, they dreamed even bigger with Znamya 3, a 70-meter disk so large it would dwarf entire buildings. The end game was a 200-meter orbital reflector, an enormous shining sail unfolding in the vacuum of space. But they weren't planning just one. The vision was a fleet, between 24 and 36 giant mirrors circling the Earth. Each satellite would fly in a sun-synchronous orbit somewhere between 1,000 and 6,000 kilometers above the surface, always catching sunlight, always ready to redirect it downward. With their combined power, these reflectors could illuminate entire towns, projecting a beam of light 50 times brighter than the full moon and covering an area between 60 and 90 kilometers wide. Imagine looking up during a winter night and seeing a moving circle of daylight glide silently across the sky. That was the dream, an engineered sunrise on demand. A human-made constellation designed not for warfare, not for exploration, but for turning darkness into light. And step by step, the Znamya project was inching closer to making that dream real. Launched in 1999, this upgraded reflector stretched 25 meters across, big enough to cast a seven kilometer wide spotlight onto Earth with a brightness between five and 10 times that of a full moon. The team hoped this version could finally hold a stable beam on one location for several minutes proving the concept wasn't just theatrical, but truly useful. But as the reflector unfolded in orbit, disaster struck. The ultra-thin mylar membrane snagged on a Progress spacecraft antenna. A tiny catch became a devastating tear, spreading across the mirror faster than operators could respond. Engineers tried everything, maneuvers, thruster bursts, repositioning, but nothing freed the trapped sheet. With the reflector ruined, Znamya 2.5 spiraled downward and burned up in Earth's atmosphere. And that single failure didn't just end a mission, it ended the entire vision. Znamya 3, the 200-meter mirror, the whole orbital illumination system, canceled forever. And just like that, the Znamya dream came to an end. Znamya 3, the 70-meter reflector that was supposed to prove the system's full potential, was never built. And when Vladimir Siromyatnikov passed away in the year 2006, the momentum behind giant space mirrors faded with him. Since then, no space agency or private group has attempted a reflector of this scale again, and honestly, maybe that's for the best. Once scientists looked closely at the idea, they realized that redirecting sunlight onto Earth might do more harm than good, disturbing ecosystems, confusing wildlife, and disrupting human sleep cycles. Even the economic benefits were uncertain. The concept worked in theory, but in real life it created more questions than answers. Still, there is something admirable about the boldness of it all. The 1990s were a rare moment when ambitious, unconventional ideas could still get greenlit, simply because they pushed boundaries. 
Launching giant mirrors into orbit just to see what happens feels wild today, but it also reminds us how innovation often begins with daring experiments.